Greetings from Elite English Academy. Dear friends, in this video, I am going to discuss how to prepare for Unit 5 of PGTRB English. As a part of this, I have discussed the last two exams questions. This unit is titled as Shakespeare. It consists of General Shakespeare and Shakespeare's other plays. This is the overall map of the last two years unit-wise question distribution. Look at that. So in 2019, it is something unbelievable. 15 questions are asked from this unit alone. Whereas in 2017, 8 questions are asked. For example, in our detail from Macbeth and Tempest, both the years 2 from Macbeth and Tempest, 1 each. And from General Shakespeare, though it is just uh, an introduction to Shakespeare, four questions were asked in 2019, whereas 17 question was in 17, one question was asked. Regarding non-detail, so in 2019, totally eight questions are asked. In 2017, four questions are asked. From this, what do we understand? There is no difference between detail and non-detail. To be frank, in a detail, uh, less questions are there, whereas in non-detail, there are more questions. And one more thing, General Shakespeare, though it uh, does not consist of any syllabus, just General Shakespeare is given. You have to start from the learning, learning of Shakespeare's life and his gradual development of four stages and his sonnets. All these informations are asked in the exam. So it is very important at least once you go through that text the texts are available in the internet just you can go through once before the examination first let's discuss the questions from 2019 the following speech of macbeth is an example of for one of the stage devices given in the options so this supernatural soliciting cannot be ill cannot be good if ill why has it given me earnest of success? Commencing in a truth. So from the question it is given, the question is from Macbeth. So one uh, problem is solved. Whereas there are uh, different techniques uh, given. Soliloquy, aside, foreshadowing, chorus. Chorus, so since this particular uh, uh, sentences, uh, sentences are spoken by Macbeth and chorus cannot be. Right? So this can be removed. Soliloquy, talking uh, alone and aside. So this foreshadowing is a kind of technique uh, talking about uh, so what is going to happen in future that will be discussed or that will be given by the writer in advance. So foreshadowing is also not there because he is thinking of the past. So what was given by the supernatural elements. Between these two you have to choose. So of course it is soliloquy. At the same time, so he is talking alone. At the same time, so here, this supernatural soliting, when he and uh, Banco are uh, talking, so this particular uh, sentences are uttered. So, aside, so this particular thing is spoken by Macbeth, which is heard by the audience, whereas it is not heard by the other uh, characters on the stage. So, when it is talked by Macbeth, both Macbeth and Banco are on the stage. So Macbeth talks this without the knowledge of or without being heard by Banco. So it should be aside. So aside is a technique in which a character speaks to the audience without the knowledge of the person who is accompanying that person. So this is used to create humor in general. Whereas here the inner mind of Macbeth is revealed. Now we are moving to the next question. The abusive language used by Prince Hall to address Falstaff as the sanguine coward, this bed presser, this uh, horseback breaker, this huge hill of flesh. So huge hill of flesh uh, refers to his uh, fat body. So from the question itself, we understand it is abusive language. Abusive language means scolding someone. So how it is? So he is scolding. How this can be called? 
is it self effacing self effacing means uh, uh, self praising something then solicitous it is uh, solemn and it is with uh, respect so this can also be deleted venerating again the same meaning so the first three options mean so something good whereas in the question itself it is given as abusive language so invective invective the dictionary meaning says it is abusive so how the questions are asked the lines are given at the same time so here uh, actually this is a very simple question provided you know the meaning of the word uh, invective and uh, self-effacing solicitous and venerating already you know these two are uh, relatively difficult word so this is the reason if you go through the text if you take notes if you listen to lectures in english definitely these kind of words will be familiar to you when such questions come you can easily answer question number three the political situation under henry the fourth was similar to that under the tudors the stewards the saxons gallic so here uh, if you this is the question that combines uh, this unit and the uh, history of english literature so from this we understand so uh, the saxons and uh, gallic these are the early uh, people so so these two options can be removed so it should be between the tudors and uh, stewards so in the text henry the fourth it is mentioned it is mentioned so the tudor so henry belongs to tudor family so that is the simple fact of course uh, from the uh, wikipedia and other sources we come to know uh, henry the fourth actually henry family belongs to originally it belongs to ireland so it first captured power in 1845 it first captured power in 1845 afterwards uh, the generation starts from this we understand so here how the questions are asked so if it is from text you can easily and uh, answer at the same time this question is asked based on the history of that play the original from chronicle he got the uh, sources you know so that information helps one to answer this question so this is the answer the tudors fourth one come though mortal rich with thy sharp teeth this not intrinsicate of life at once unite sorry untie poor venomous fool be angry and dispatch the phrase mortal rich refers to of course if you become familiar with this line so from which play it is taken you can very easily understand so whether you understand all the words here or not so very simply you can uh, uh, you will be familiar with the word venomous venomous means poisonous so in which uh, play of prescribed play uh, uh, when a poison is used right so first it is from antony and cleopatra antony and cleopatra so when uh, cleopatra dies she arranges for the snake so holding the snake she speaks so from antony and cleopatra it has been used so what are the options seagull seagull is not referred wrong option then uh, falcon cannot be mule uh, it is an animal so this also cannot be so it is an asp right so it refers to a snake that's all so as simple as that if you become familiar with the text and if you have some input in english definitely even without uh, the much uh, thinking you can fix this answer so this is the most uh, difficult question i would say uh, because uh, four characters from the same play antony and cleopatra and uh, their uh, lines are given but uh, look at the question very carefully match the following characters with their utterances it is not tossed on whom this character uh, or on whom uh, the speech is done the line is about it is about who speaks these lines look at the options octavius caesar cleopatra enormous and antony all these things are a very common line especially one line let me give you so age cannot be their hair nor custom stale he had a infinite variety so definitely we know it's about cleopatra but uh, cleopatra cannot uh, speak this that is the point here right 
So here uh, the option, uh, let me give since it is a little bit complicated, let me explain one by one. So first Octavius Caesar says the, this line. So there is, uh, uh, but you are come, yeah, make made to Rome. Octavius Caesar talking to his sister Octavia. So you have come to Rome uh, like a maid because Rome has got uh, another uh, queen like that. Then Cleopatra, so definitely husband, I come. Husband, I come. So, this is the beautiful line by Cleopatra. So, it is B. Then, Enormous. So, it is age uh, cannot wither her, nor custom stale her infinite variety. Please uh, keep it in mind. This is one of the immortal lines by Shakespeare about uh, Cleopatra. Actually, it is a tribute to Cleopatra. It is uh, talked by Enormous. Actually, the additional information is, so when Agrippa, Enormous and uh, Messinus talk in Act 2 of uh, Scene 3 when they are discussing Antony and uh, Cleopatra. So they are told he speaks about Cleopatra. Then Antony, the only uh, remaining option. So it is uh, a Roman by a Roman valiantly vanquished. So this happened uh, towards the end of the play. So the option is, as I mentioned, so it is option C. Next one, oh my dear Lord, I crave no other, no better man who speaks these words in a measure for measure. Unless uh, you read the original text, uh, this cannot be answered. Actually, oh my dear Lord, I crave no other nor no better man. So it is by Mariana. It is the direct action answer, Mariana. Next one. The period of Shakespeare's literary activity extends over dash years and this may be broken up to up into dash sub periods. So one possible clue is Shakespeare's uh, lifespan as a dramatist has been uh, classified into four. So in that information, based on that information, we can remove these two. Then uh, is it 24 years or uh, 28 uh, uh, years? So definitely we have to know some period. For example, the first uh, period starts in 1588. It starts from 1588 to 1593, which consists of uh, the early plays uh, Titus and uh, Andronicus and Henry the sixth three parts loss labor loss like that the last part now uh, again so if you know the publication or the enactment of Shakespeare's first and last play very easily you can give the answer the last stage that is uh, called as uh, fine comedies and dramatic romances so it is in uh, 1608 right so now uh, you deduce 50, 18, 88, 15, 88, he has started, 88, 98, 8, right, then uh, 20, then uh, the remaining uh, 4 uh, years, then very easily. So the last play, Tempest, was enacted in, uh, it was in uh, 12, 1612. So definitely the answer is the first uh, one, that is 24 years and uh, four periods please keep it in mind so in future also it is a possible question so four periods first period is known as period of experimentation between 1588 and 1593 second period period of the humor and history 1594 and 1600 third period period of uh, bitter tragedies uh, which consist of the place like uh, Julius Caesar, uh, Macbeth, Hamlet, Measure for Measure, All is Well, That Ends Well. It is between 1600 or 1601 to 1608. Then the last stage, Fine Comedies and Dramatic Romances, 1608 to 1612. Next one. Which one of the following statement is not true? in Shakespeare's England. Again, this is also based on uh, the historical background of Shakespeare's time. First, so not true. So this is the key thing you have to keep it in mind. Normally, our brain will not uh, read the negative statements. Look at that. The pleasure seeker uh, could 
entertain himself at the curtain or the globe theatres of course the people who want to enjoy their life they can go to globe theatre fine right option then men and women seem to be living in a perceptual fancy dress ball of course they are women of elizabethan age they are more interested in uh, uh, dressing very good so that is also true no woman ever appeared on the stage and very few attended the theater at all so that is also true so since uh, many female ca female characters cannot be uh, brought to the stage uh, only very few uh, less uh, female characters were there in shakespeare's time even uh, sometimes shakespeare made the male characters play the play the female characters number one number two even uh, in many of his plays female characters disguised themselves as uh, uh, male so like uh, merchant of venice so portia hides herself as uh, uh, male so this is an example next one the queen did not summon the players to court on special festivals this is wrong because the queen was very much interested the queen summoned the theater uh, theater artists to the palace to enact a play so the which is not true please again uh, see that the question is not true so option d is the right answer and at this juncture i would like to point out uh, one thing so there is a movie called uh, shakespeare in love uh, if time permits you please watch it because the historical background of elizabethan age and how shakespeare uh, grew as a dramatist that is uh, portrayed of course there are some controversies and some obscene uh, scenes are there but anyhow for a literature student it is a movie you must watch because you can get even if you know if you have watched that movie definitely you would have answered this question and uh, any question that is related to shakespeare's age next one it is a very common question shakespeare wrote dash sonnets and dash plays so we know it is 154 sonnets and 37 plays of course one play is unfinished play and two a few plays are the author is disputed so the confirmed plays are 37 only next one which one of the following is a non dramatic poem of shakespeare again it is from uh, general shakespeare let me give you the answer directly venus and adonis so this has been uh, repeatedly quoted by many critics also so this is the early poem in which uh, shakespeare uh, showcased his strength as a dramatist and poet 11 the contemporaries of shakespeare recognize the source of the title measure for measure as the words with what measure you met it shall be measured to you again so it is from actually measure for measure it is from bible in bible uh, there is a sermon of the mount in which uh, it is uh, jesus christ uh, uh, talks about this so the option especially the people who have uh, learned uh, the source of the title so one thing you please keep it in mind whenever you have a title you try to get information about the source of the title then this kind of question can be easily answered yeah next one twelve in the opening scene of macbeth we are made to wonder about the dash their powers their connection with macbeth so anyone who has prepared uh, easily will answer this question because the opening scene of uh, macbeth starts with uh, the appearance of the weird sisters right the weird sisters uh, the three witches 13. next one the title measure for measure recalls a verse in the sermon on the mount probably by mistake uh, they might have given uh, two similar questions anyhow it is uh, it is good for the uh, students so it is uh, based on the sermon of the mount 14th question measure for measure was first printed in the first folio of dash so one thing please keep it in mind all the prominent plays of uh, shakespeare so no play of shakespeare was published during his lifetime so it was published 
in the first folio. The date of publication, the year of publication is 1623. So in future also, it is a very good source. Please keep it in mind. So 1623, for the first time, Shakespeare's plays were collected and published even uh, second folio third folio or uh, there we have given it in our main course right so uh, please collect those information and you know it so 1623 is the publication of first folio then prospero the duke of milan devoted himself more to the study of philosophy and magic so art black magic uh, they, they are uh, distant uh, options so philosophy and magic now we are entering into 2017 questions only eight questions are there so compared to 2019 questions these questions were relatively easy look at that all the perfumes of arabia will not sweeten this little hand who is the speaker the immortal line it is by uh, lady macbeth uh, when uh, lady macbeth uh, takes the sleep walking at that time uh, she washes her hand and uh, she talks like this second one when prospero first arrives on the island he lets ariel free from a pine tree a pine tree so it is the direct answer third one and like bright metal on a sullen ground my reformation glittering over my fault shall show more goodly so here uh, who whose words are these so from the description itself uh, it is uh, someone is regretting so it is from uh, henry the fourth uh, part one it is by prince uh, hall so here uh, please uh, note down prince hall is the person who was uh, making fun with his friends like uh, false stop whereas when he realizes when uh, the duty calls him he realizes the mistake and he regrets in 2019 also in similar occasion only a question was asked so so the part of the transformation of henry the fourth uh, in that uh, prince hall's transformation is very very important redeem your brother by yielding to my will or he shall die tomorrow who speaks these words to isabella so isabella is a character in measure for measure then uh, angelo the duke in charge he is talking like this next one which one of the following is not a pessimistic play of shakespeare so if you know the meaning of the word pessimistic of course a literature student easily knows that uh, optimistic so positive pessimistic negative so here uh, king lear uh, the king uh, king lear uh, uh, is uh, dying at the end uh, the, because of old age uh, indecision macbeth we know he is murdered othello he commits suicide so the only possible uh, reconciliation is measure for measure so the answer the pessimistic so which is not the pessimistic uh, play i am repeatedly telling you when you find a question with not you please be careful because our mind generally will not breathe the negative statements next one hotspur o sister then uh, mortimer and uh, glendo plan to dethrone henry the fourth actually prince hall belongs uh, is the son of henry the fourth so he does not come there richard the second is not uh, in the party because henry the fourth and other uh, mentioned people they they dethrone uh, richard the second so that is also not the option thomas percy he belongs to the other uh, side only so definitely henry the fourth is the answer cleopatra takes refuge in her it is a very basic question because uh, when uh, the when uh, she falls her army falls then uh, she and uh, antony they take refuge in the monument so finally she dies in the monument this is the last question here whose son is fleans so fleans is the son of uh, macduff uh, all children of macduff uh, they are uh, killed malcolm is the another son of banco king duncan is not there so don albain and uh, uh, malcolm are the sons of uh, the king duncan look at that malcolm is the son of king duncan 
Macduff does not have children because all the children are uh, killed at the end. Then Banco. So Banco's son, son uh, Banco has got sons. Then uh, Fleance is the son of Banco. Dear friends, so if you consider the unit of Shakespeare, the number of plays are less. Don't differentiate as detail and non-detail. My humble request will be go through the text at least once so that the tricky questions can be answered. One more thing compared to the 2017 uh, question, 2019 questions number is more as well as the intensity, the difficulty level is also very high. So my humble request is read the text because only a few texts are available. You read the text, collect more information on the general Shakespeare so that you can answer whatever may be the questions that are asked in this particular unit. Thank you. All the best.